I'm the boss lady. The Kelly Howling Show. Watch out, let's go. Tired, talking just to get inside. Guys, we're talking about the walking. Wanna help you see? Faith is calling and she's walking with the victory. The king is on her side and she never quits. Put you on the show and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. This is savvy, it's a Kelly. Are you kidding this? to the Kelly Holland Show. I'm so glad you tuned in. Today, we have a special guest, and I can't wait to introduce you to her. Please help me welcome Dr. Jacqueline Phelps. Hello, hello. I'm glad to be here as well. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Phelps. Please let our viewers know who you are and what it is that you do, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm Dr. Jacqueline Phelps. Um, I live in Texas right now, Mansfield, Texas. Um, I'm an author, an educator, public speaker. Uh, some might say a Jacqueline of all trades. Um, right now or today, I'm here to, to talk about my blog that I have that's called What Hat You're Wearing Today. Mm -hmm. um, it's a blog that I do on my website, drphelps.com. That website, you can go to drphelps.com. Don't forget the hyphen. And you can reach my weekly blog. Then okay. I also have a show that I do on Facebook. That's on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and, my fa and it's called, um, on my Facebook page. And that runs on Thursday. And it's called Hoped Up Thursday. And that's in conjunction with my book. My book okay. is called Sharing the Way to Grief. So exactly. Hope That Thursday is a place where people can come to connect with other group people who are supporting someone through grief. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I wanted to get to, your book about grief. Um, grief is something that I struggle with. Um, when I know that there's a birthday coming up of someone that I haven't quite processed yet that's moved on to Christ, I just do a mental health day. I don't want to deal with anybody or anything. And I just kind of shut down on that day. And that's kind of how I deal with it. Um, but I'm so grateful that you have a book out here for us to kind of tune into and to help us deal with it. Please let us know, firstly, what the inspiration was behind your book and what it is all about. Great. Um, the inspiration behind my book was the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I didn't even know that what the things that were being aligned in my life would lead to the book. My daughter passed away in 2003, Michelle Brittany Phelps, um, from a lower bronchial spasm. Um, when she passed away, you know, our, I'm the oldest on my family. My husband's the oldest on his side of the family. So it tore our whole family apart, things upside down. I was the oldest of five boys. So the nurturer, the protector, the supporter. So when I went upside down, it literally casted a shadow over a lot of our family. So the book is in relationship. It's a relationship book. How do you have relationships while you're on the journey? While you're doing the thing? How do you communicate? How do you love? Those things are very important when you're going through your process of grief. And thank you so much. Tell us more about your book without giving all the jewels because we want our viewers to go out. And <laughs> okay, so out. the book is <laughs> the book is the first part of the book is my journey. Mm -hmm. And that starts with the day that Michelle passed and moves you directly to the whole day. Her passing, the fact that my husband and my, my, my older brother and his older brother was there. And the children were not because I was with them at the water park and had brought Michelle home. So the book starts off talking about the hand of God, even in that, that I didn't even feel or know or see at the time. But now that I'm 18 years on this side of the journey, I can better see 
behind me. And that day, Michelle, when she, Michelle passed, I dropped her back off and I went to the water, back to the water park. She said she just didn't want to swim anymore. And so I dropped her off and I went back to the water park with the rest of the children. So the only people that were home was Michelle and the men. And that started the anger between God and I, which brought the book. Why was I not there? Why did you cheat me from that? Why did you take that away from me? So the book kind of grows from that relationship that I had, open dialogue that I had with the Holy Spirit and with God, because I was very unpleased, but my personality allowed me to voice that to him and not be afraid to voice that, not thinking that God was so small that I could interrupt him by my questioning. And then um, it must have been very healing. It was very healing. And the last part of the book is the healing part. That's the part about the quick reference guide where you'll find scriptures and application and quick tips and um, prayers that you can insert the person's name into. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is beautiful. You know, I, I enjoy the interviews that we have with authors because you guys are just so creative um, in what you produce and what you want to share with the world because um, your, pro your products are available worldwide. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Once you put it together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Worldwide. There it is. There it is. Packaged and ready to go. It's tangible. You all put your hand on it. It's hand not on it. Okay. And buy it. Okay. Buy it. <laughs> it's buy not two. Just, um, it's do it two, three, four and pass them out because we all deal with mental health in our own ways. And so, um, and some of us need a little bit of help with that too. Amen. And so, if I could real fast to tell them about the cover, how mm -hmm. the cover came about. Yeah, so everything. It's Jesus and Simeon. And so, or Simon, however you say it out of your mouth or in your culture. Um, and the and it's about Jesus's relationship with him, that he was picked out of the crowd, not wanting to be picked because he was there with his children. So no one wants to be picked to help someone that's being crucified when you have your family on board. So I thought about- Oh, 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 oh. Simeon was who came out the crowd to help Yes, him. and he came out not because he said, he, he, me, 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 me. No. The, he, the, he, they, he was- he was picked yeah, out and told right. that he came. And so I felt that way that I didn't want to come, but I was picked and chose to come. And then he helped Jesus. He didn't take the cross. He didn't bury it. He didn't get on the cross and do it for him. He just helped him with the load. So the book is designed off of that. Sharing the way of grief, sharing the load. You can't have my load. You can't have my grief. You can't be crucified, but please come and help me make it. Amen. That's powerful. So this is a please come and help me make it book. And hey, honey, send me four five. <laughs> 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 is that battle of the mind is not easy to overcome, and 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 we need help. But sometimes we we retreat to our cave and we don't want to be bothered, and we get caught in that stage of funk. And that funk can last for a while. And then you start to stink. <laughs> well, that's why I love your show. Because your show is real conversation. And my book is real conversation. So mm -hmm. if your ears are, are a little sensitive, then keep on reading past that point. I'll come back and get you. But <laughs> I speak about real talk. I say it the way that it needs to be said. I say, if I was smelling my daughter's dirty panties, that's what I said. and. It, it's hard for someone to hear, but when, but if you've had a loss, you understand it. You take things of the person and you put them in Ziploc bags so that you can go back and reminisce. Not wise, not healthy, but you do it. And I'm so I speak about healthy. those things that are I unspeakable. Box too. I do. I have a keepsake box too. My dad passed away out of nowhere. I'm still upset about it. <laughs> and I can feel it and I can feel you know that but this is community this is this is how we make it when you say that we stop and we receive it and we experience it because it's when real go back right when you go back and you have to look through their belongings and you gotta tidy that up oh lord I don't mess the makeup up but when you exactly when you have to go back through their belongings and you gotta kind of collect it and 
deal with that moment in their space and their smells and you don't realize those things when you're when when in in the midst of it you realize it now that they're gone now that you've taken time away and then when you re into that space oh man the memory and i'm just hugging on you and i'm loving you right now (laughs) as your tears fall because they don't make me sad when i see your tears fall because you know what i see i see love I love I see that if you didn't love him like that, if you didn't love hard, there'd be no tears. So when I see that, I think, my God, she loved that man. (laughs) I did. When we were cleaning up, um, I do. (laughs) When we were cleaning up um, his pillowcase, when you talk about putting things in Ziploc bags, his pillowcase smelled like him. I zipped it right up, folded it up, zipped it up, and every now and then, I go smell my daddy. It's just enough. Ain't that just enough? It's just enough. I go smell my daddy. I kept his shoes. I kept just just random things, and I put it all in my box. So, no, you're not weird. (laughs) It's nothing wrong with your healing process. And I think that we all experience that, but somewhere in the church body, we have been conditioned to be quiet, quiet mouthed about those feelings, you think to it came from suppress the church those body? feelings. You think it came from the church body or did you think, I it think came that from our I, older way of living? I think it's an older way of living, but because church is so rooted in us, mm-hmm. I don't know anything older in my family than my church. How about know? that? Because <laughs> that was where we had Wednesday night Bible study, Thursday night pre- uh, uh, family time, Friday night it was choir practice, Saturday night was children's choir, prior. Sunday we was at church all day. It's the you know? rack center, baby. <laughs> so <laughs> everything from our culture, from my family, flowed from there. So when someone passed, we found, we learned how to move on from those. And what mm-hmm. they would say is, I'm good. Um, or they would say, you say, how you doing today? Blessed and highly favored. All of that. Blessed and highly favored. And I would say that and come home and be like, arguing with God. And he's like, well, why you tell them you blessed and highly favored? But when you come sit here with me, you upset. <laughs> so call it like it is. When they asked you how you doing, say you upset with me because that's the truth. So mm-hmm. I started speaking truth, my truth. I don't feel blessed and highly favored. I feel injured because he hurt me so bad and I love him so much. And why? And why? And then once the truth came out, then I could write the book. Then I could tell the story. Then I could, I, I could stop being a victim. Mm-hmm. God wasn't picking on me. No. <laughs> There's always so much more to the plan. And had we had knowledge of the plan, who would we be today? <laughs> Are you gonna stop it? <laughs> Perfect, right? <laughs> Doubt it. We'd be like, oh, it's gonna be taken care of, so I can do all this. We'd probably be worse, way worse, if we knew the plan. <laughs> I think because if I knew the plan, I would go ahead of him and then I'd have this gr- this whole thing done, you know. And it's not my timing, it's his timing, it's not my will, it's his will, it's not my power, it's his power. So I must slow down. I must make myself. I have four principles that I provide in the book. And the first one is um, the work belongs to God. And that we forget that on grief journeys, especially when you're supporting someone and you want that person so bad to be happy again, but you can't work them into better. The second one is silent is more than okay. It's vital. It's okay to be quiet. It's okay not to have a statement. It's okay not to have a comeback. It's okay not to know what to say. The third one is the journey, uh, the Holy Spirit is a master teacher. You're not going to teach nobody out of grief. You're not going to love nobody out of grief. You're not going to rock nobody out of grief. You're not going to cuss nobody out of grief. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to tell you exactly what to say at the moments when to say it. And then the final one, which is the one I love the most, is that the journey belongs to the grieving loved one. You're just helping them with the cross. You don't get to carry it. You don't get to define it. You don't get to date it. You don't get to put time limit. All you get to do is to come and share with me on it. Make it a little lighter. 
Amen. And thanks for letting me lighten your load today. We got you your did. dad. You what did. is his name? My dad, Michael Baker. <laughs> gonna lift you up pop <laughs> but you know and when I <laughs> thank you so much um but then I'm also thinking about other mothers that have lost siblings I've well dang now I feel bad I've lost two children but the only thing I'm thinking about is my daddy <laughs> it's more recent it's more recent but my my uh my, my very close girlfriend she's lost a son and as you sit here and talk all I can do is remember being there for her um here we go again, <laughs> being there Please. for her and just, you know, trying to be supportive, but, 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 but like you say, helping her with the cross, you know, helping her to be in her cave, to be silent, taking the burden off of her and taking care of some of this paperwork stuff that I'm good at. And she don't need to worry about that right yes. now, yes. you know, and to use a child yes. violently, yes. her oldest. I tore the whole family apart. Likewise with you, I'm sure. Yes. And it sounds like y'all have big families. Big family. Big family. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, just to lose a child, wow. It 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 does something to you as a mother. It yes. harms you. Yes. Um, I think for me, it made me more um I what what it seems that whatever your personality is, you team you, you tend to fall different so if you're in, if you're an introvert you you you're more vocal if you're an ex if people if you're an extrovert then what i did was i recoiled i went under underground and when i went under i didn't even want to be touched just somebody touching me was too much um so i would do the fake your thing in the morning so that i could get eric at the time was five so that i could get her to school and get her off and then i would come home and for Six months, I flipped God off literally and went back to bed. And that's how I felt because I felt like that's what he was doing to me. But in right. his timing- I'm mad at you, God. You did yeah, and, in, you. and I was very okay with saying, but I knew him and I loved him that much that I knew that he could have, that he could have saved me at any time. And so that hurt me. But I like how God is patient with us mm. and he waits for us. It's like, you know what? I know you mad. And I'm going to give you that time because you're coming back to me because oh, I have yes. a plan for you. And it's not to harm you, but it's to prosper you. Come on with that Jeremiah 29. <laughs> it's to prosper you and not to harm you. It's to keep you and to give you a hope and a dream. And so with that in mind, I'm not thinking about what you're going to do for me, God. I'm thinking about what I'm dealing with right now and how bad it hurts. And I don't know what to do. I don't have the wherewithal. But you have this tool right here to share, to help me with my grief, to get the weight off of me, to, 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 to help my shoulders not have all this burden on it. And so I'm so grateful for you, mother of God. I'm so Thank grateful you. for you. Um, you. I love them. I guess come on with these nice little gems. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> what else you got out there? <laughs> what else is out there? Please, please, please give us more gems. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a curriculum that will do just that. I'm an application girl. So mm -hmm. I believe that you can sit and you can receive all the word that you can hold. But if there's no application and implementation, then it falls on stony ground or the birds will just come and take it away. So I'm exactly. coming with a curriculum that will give or modules that will give ministers the tools in their hands because the book speaks to the supporter, not to the griever, even though at times I was the griever like you, but then at the times you were the supporter of someone. And it could be from the same situation as when my daughter passed, I was the griever. And as the mother does most often, the head griever. My husband, I had to comfort him at times. I had to comfort my brothers at times. So at times I had to be wise enough to take off my grieving hat set it down and then pick up my supporting hat and put it on so that we all could come out good. So the book is about take your grieving hat off, put black woman, because okay. we have so many and put on your supporting hat, but know they exist so you can survive. Know that there's that hat and there's that hat and that both of them are valid, but you can't wear them at the same time. Amen. 
Amen. Feel so inspired right now. I truly do. And I hope you have two viewers because I done messed up this makeup talking to Dr. Phelps. Somebody told me I had to put some extra stuff on today. Nobody told me to get that concealer ready. Nobody told me. Oh. Dr. Phelps, it's been such a pleasure to have you on today. I am so grateful that you um, have offered me some healing. Um, okay. you, you healed me too today. And that's how it works, right? Thank you for healing me today. I appreciate you, woman. I truly do. <laughs> Please let our viewers know how they can support you, how they can reach out to you, how they can find you in all of your works. Plus, okay, so plus, mm -hmm. on Thursdays at noon, I have a Facebook group that's called Hoped Up Thursday. I'm sorry, drphelps.com. And so you can go to the Facebook page, drphelps.com. That's the Facebook page. And then I have a group that I run a session on called Hoped Up Thursday. And that's on, on noon, Hoped Up Thursday. So um, the, the theme is because I had a, a, someone in my life, an older lady that, that used to say, I'm so hoped up. So I want the supporter. That's the place that we do just what you, you and I are doing right now. It's open dialogue. We sit and we talk. We talk about your dad. It's like we talk today. People put in the chat things that's helped them. I ask them to put scriptures that have helped. It's a community where we come together, supporters, to help one another make it on our journeys. And then I have a blog that comes out once a week called What Hats You Wearing Today? And we that's why I keep it real like you. I'm like, what we need to talk about. This week, my conversation, because this is National Women's Month, so this this week, my conversation was about um, us women making 40%, being 20%, making 20% to 40% less than males in the workplace still. internationally. Yeah, still, still, but you want me to put my hat on. So you know my hat had to bow low for that one. We need to <laughs> speed it up, speed it up. <laughs> and then on, um, and then other than that, I'm going to be just places promoting my book and public speaking. I'm truly love speaking at, and I don't care how small, cause I love people, but I love speaking at uh, Bible studies, women conferences. I even do uh, in the summertime, I do uh, back to school when the kids come back to school. I tailor make my conversation to whatever age group because there's grief in, gr in elementary and there's grief in nursing homes. So I care not who the subject is. I just love people. Amen. Amen. And it's been a pleasure to have you on our show. Please come back with more jewels for our healthy minds. Amen. 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 Um, viewers, please go out and support Dr. Phelps. Um, she has her book out right now. Please buy, 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 buy some copies for your family. We could all use some help in that area. Dr. Phelps, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. And you have just witnessed the Kelly Holland 